Hello and welcome to Devil's Advocate. Is Britain a racist country or is that an unfair conclusion of the Shilpa Shetty story? That's the key issue I shall raise today in an exclusive interview with the British High Commissioner, Sir Michael Arthur. High Commissioner, let me start with a simple question. After all that we've seen of the treatment of Shilpa Shetty on Celebrity Big Brother, how damaged is Britain's image in India today? Well, good evening, Karen. Very nice to be with you. Um, I think this has been a very interesting and, and in some ways, rather healthy uh, debate that we've been having in Britain that has come out of the Big Brother show. And now clearly there's been a big impact across India, and it's interesting quite how much this issue has been picked up. In a damaging impact? No, a big impact across there. And I hope that the conclusion from all this uh, will be in India, will be that here in Britain we have, in fact, a very lively and open society that is debating this and coming to the conclusion absolutely that we're not a racist society. I want very much to talk about what the view from Britain is. But first, for a moment, let's talk about whether there's been damage to Britain's image in India or not. On the very day that Gordon Brown who's most likely going to be your next prime minister, said he wanted Britain to be recognized for its fairness and its tolerance. You, en you ended up coming across as an intolerant, cruel, racist country. Surely that has damaged well, the image. Uh, I beg to differ on that. I mean, I was with him all during that visit, extremely successful visit, and he very warmly received by everybody here. And we felt uh, a very important visit that moved the relationship forward. And of course, this came up from all the press at the beginnings of every interview. But I was quite struck at how, if you look at the coverage during that interview, during that uh, day or two days, uh, the Shilpa Shetty issue was one of the issues, but by no means the dominant one. You talk about the coverage. Let me quote from British newspapers. The Sun says, this was a defining moment in the way Britain is seen by the rest of the world, and then added, Britain is humiliated. The Independent said, we are all ashamed. Clearly, British newspapers accept that damage has been done to Britain's image in India. Why can't you accept it? Because you just switched your attack from what's happening in India to what's happening in Britain. Now, I think in Britain, it's been in a rather different story. And this has really ignited a big public debate. And as I said just now, I think this has been a rather healthy uh, episode in this because, as you've seen from the reaction of the great British public, 40,000 people have now uh, called in to complain about the comments that were made. A very strong um, sense in Britain that this, the remarks, the offensive remarks that were made by Jade uh, Goody were actually intolerable and not the sort of things that we as a modern society nowadays stand for. Well, you say they were intolerable and you say that this is not something that Britain as a modern society stands for. The key question that people are asking, both in Britain and in India, is a very simple one, but perhaps an offensive one. Is Britain a racist society? Is Britain a racist country? How would you, as British High Commissioner, answer that question in India today? I think you need to, to stand back and see the very radical transformation that's been happening in the last generation, about 15, 20 years. We've become a very diverse, multicultural society. I mean, huge numbers of different ethnic minority communities who come in, some of them, particularly the Indian uh, ethnic minority, extremely successful in our society, in, in our economy. And there's a process of adjustment which is going on inside British society over this last generation, Except that of which this is part of the public debate. Except is it a process of adjustment? Because you see, it's not just Big Brother. Now, in fact, Exeter Crown Court judges have begun, it seems, to condone racism. Earlier this month, Judge Paul Darlow refused to accept that when a white man said to an Asian doctor, and I'm quoting, <laughs> you Paki, I want an English doctor, not a <laughs> Paki, that that wasn't racism. Is the system in denial? Well, that's the sort of language which I, of course, found completely intolerable. I mean, the law will take its due process. We have very strict laws in this, in, in my country, about these sorts of accusations. And indeed, uh, for public sector broadcasting, you have Ofcom, which is now making. Uh, but an a judge into ruled this case. that this wasn't racism. In fact, the judge went further. He says, "I cannot see that it caused him any distress or hurt." It's such comments by judges, such television programs that lead people to the conclusion. Britain has something racist, something disquieting about it. No, I think, um, I don't know the, in the details of that case that you just uh, recorded. And the, as I say, the due process of law has to take its due process, as in this country. But it seems to me that you're picking up one or two headlines from that to try and generalize from that in a way which the uh, volume of information and, and statistics is showing exactly the opposite. 
is here we have a very open society, very open television type of society, uh, very open press, as you know very well from our, society, from our country, where these issues are quite rightly being debated. And the conclusion that the great British public is coming to is exactly that we are not a racist well, society and are ashamed if there's any sense that we should be. You talk about the conclusion the great British public is coming to. In fact, I want to draw your attention to things that have been said by British people. Jermaine Greer says this is a racist country. Martin Jacks, writing in The Guardian, said, if the truth be told, we are a society that is dripping in racism. I mean, I think across any society, particularly a society in going through this sort of range of social and economic change that we have, and we might just talk about that uh, further I in a minute, you are bound to find two or three things. First of all, individuals who do have uh, unacceptable, but uh, racist, if you want to call it that, um, individual views, and we see that occasionally, which get picked up in the press. There are other epithets that people use to criticize cultures and groups that they don't uh, believe in. I mean, sometimes you find gender discrimination, you find religious discrimination. I mean, we have laws against all that, but we can't stop individuals e having their except say. High Commissioner the issue is whether the majority opinion goes with that. It's not just individuals that I'm quoting to you. Great British institutions today are beginning to express a certain concern about what they consider the racism that is latent in the country. The Observer, a 200-year-old newspaper, says that, in fact, what Big Brother did was to hold up a mirror to British society. The Archbishop of York has spoken of the ugly underbelly of British society. The chairman of your Commission for Equality and Human Rights says, we have now seen contemporary racism. Are all these institutions, are all these individuals wrong? Those are commenting, um, and I understand why they say that, about individual comments that were made by people uh, who've come to the prominence in this affair and other ones. Uh, if you look at, you haven't quoted any of the things that have been said in the House of Commons by uh, across the spectrum of political opinion, by political leaders, uh, by the editorials in many of the newspapers who actually uh, strongly condemning the few comments that you've been picking right, up on. And I, it seems to me that those people also represent uh, what I call the Great British Public, but the majority opinion in a society that has changed very much. And at the, uh, at the margins, there are people who uh, flotsam and jetsam of society has driven into positions where they are making All right, you said two very important things. It's you not said majority. You said two very important things. One, that Britain is a society that's changing a lot. And secondly, that in fact, this is not racism. This is not institutionalized racism. In that case, if it's not racism, how would you explain the following facts which have come from the annual report of the Commission for Racial Equality, as well as the annual report of the 1990 Trust? The reports break out that blacks are two and a half times more likely to be unemployed than whites in Britain, three times more likely to be homeless, five times more likely to be incarcerated in jail, and six times more likely to be stopped and searched by the police. Doesn't that indicate that blacks are treated differently because of their color? And that's, that's racism. That's, um, that's a, these, those are socioeconomic figures that you're looking at and, and the judgments that categories But all from used. British sources. But let me give you another British source, which says that uh, Chinese children have the best GCSE results across Britain ahead of white British children. Indian British uh, boys and girls have better GCSE results than white British boys and girls. I mean, you can pick and We are a very multicultural society, and it is a fact that those at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder tend to fall into categories. But I'm only bringing this up because if you say Britain's not a racist society, then how would you as High Commissioner explain these facts, that blacks are discriminated on grounds of color across a range of figures and facts that I've quoted? I mean, w in our multicultural society, there are groups who, of course, are much more disadvantaged than others. And the key issue we ha as a society and as a government have to do is to make sure that the disadvantaged are given the helping hand they can to join the mainstream of the economy and society. And there's a lot of work that goes into trying to provide for okay. those minorities. Let me then try and sum up at this point of time the two important things you said. You do not accept, despite the fact that people in India are saying this and despite the fact your own newspapers in Britain are saying it, that there's been any damage to Britain's image in India. You simply don't accept that. No, I, uh, what I'm trying to get across to you is that we are a very pluralist multicultural society where the majority of opinion are vehemently opposed to any sense of racism in our society and jump on it very hard when you do see signs of it which come out of individuals mm. and but the sort has of damage inhabit. happened now, to your image that, in India? That's the message I'm trying to get across to you. Has the damage been happened to our uh, image in India? 
My hope is very much not, because we are all working very closely and with India. And the reality? I think you, the Indian public, have to judge that, not me. So that sounds I'm as if damage could have happened, but no. you'd rather not have to point I it out, because that might be a problem. I mean, Karen, if you remember, your own show only a few nights ago on the television had a very interesting discussion where actually two of your, your two main Indian participants uh, came to the conclusion the opposite of what you're now asking me about. Let me quote from The Guardian of the 20th of January. The test of our behavior, of how racist we are, is no longer what white British people think. The test now in this instance is what Indians think, how they perceive us. Do you agree with that sentiment? But uh, The Guardian is there talking about our own Indians and the people of Indian origin who live in Britain and the other many minorities. Well, The Guardian didn't make that distinction, but you're but welcome to make the, it on their the behalf. The implication from that is what they're what No, they're I, not, I don't think so. I think the implication here is what people in India think of Britain is now the test of whether Britain's racist or not. Well, I mean, if the consensus in India were to be that this was, uh, that Britain was racist as opposed to one or two individuals who'd made racist remarks, I would be very worried about that. I mean, I actually happen to think it's not the case, but of course, if that's the perceptions here, that is, a, that is of concern, because we have this very much more modern and improving relationship between Britain and India, a very deep sort of cultural relationship now in the 21st century, and it would be very damaging to us and all I stand for if that was the perception. Here. All right. In that case, if it's not racism, how would you explain to Indian people the nature of language and the nature of behavior that they've seen on Celebrity Big Brother. It's concerned people, it's shaken people. How would you explain it to them? Well, uh, it's a fair point, that. But, and I think you have to look at the different mores in our two societies. There are many examples I can give you where things that happen and are said and are done in modern British society are not that comfortable for uh, m the majority of people in, in India. I mean, I think a lot of issues about um, how young men and women live and work together, how they treat each other, what they wear, premarital sex, there's a whole range of issues where in Britain nowadays, including for the Asian population of Britain, the mores are different to what they are in India. So this is and a clash of cultures rather uh, than racism? And that's racism? an aspect of a changing, uh, changing culture. I, I'm not at all trying to defend uh, language that might be used that is racist and offensive, and I condemn that, absolutely. I'm just trying to say that uh, some of the language used in public debate in Britain, um, swear words, wasn't even used when I was a child. I mean, the, the society has just got more liberal about this. Two quick questions. Is this, in fact, a reflection, perhaps an extreme reflection, of British working class culture, which people in India don't understand? And are they therefore misperceiving it racism? Is that, in a sense, what you're saying? Class is a very complex and sensitive issue in any society, but in our society too. And a lot of the debate, as you've seen in the British media, has been about whether this is more of a class-based uh, debate than, than anything else. Is that now, how you see Big Brother, as a class conflict rather than a racist conflict? I myself don't see it that way, but I think that's the way that some of the debate in the UK has been. How do you see it? How do you define how do you class? See it? Yeah, but now, Karen, I think it's very important to see what we mean by, by class. Britain, as I say, is a very changing society, and there are regional differentials, there are big economic differentials and social differentials between individual groups. I mean, they can mm. be But let's Welsh not go on to definition well of class because that's becoming sociological. Do yeah. you see Big Brother as a class conflict rather than a racist conflict? Are you telling the Indian people that that's how they should see it? Oh, well, I, let me tell you what I think about Big Brother. Here is a very artificial uh, forum in which you test people under rather stressful conditions because it makes good television and clearly it sells well and people like it and indeed look at the attention this has grabbed. I mean, it seems to me a rather artificial way of debating any issue in the confines of a house set up by Big Brother. So you're saying, in fact, don't take it seriously. Dismiss <laughs> it as a TV program and no more. Well, I, I, I don't want to dismiss the sense that there is a serious issue people are worried about which could be racist, and I want to tackle it head on. I think we as a society need to do that. And as I said at the opening, I think one of the strengths of this last two weeks has precisely been that we've had that debate. But I think we should put it in the context that this is a bit of People think it's good television. I personally don't, but um, you, you take your pick. You, you can see it if you want it. All right, let's take a break at that point. I want to come back and talk about Indo-British relations. Right. Not what the people of India think or what the press, but the politicians. Has that government-to-government -government relationship suffered? We'll be back in a moment's time. Don't go away. Welcome back to Devil's Advocate and an exclusive interview with the British High Commissioner. High Commissioner, let's come to whether the Shilpa Shetty celebrity Big Brother incident has affected Indo-British relations at the government-to-government -government level. Kamal Nath says that he's taken up the matter directly with Gordon Brown. 
Priya Ranjan Das Munshi asked Pranab Mukherjee to take it up foreign office to foreign office, and Anand Sharma threatened what he called appropriate action. How do you respond and react to all of that? I mean, when you've got big television headlines like this, it's, and you've got m British ministers visiting at the time, it's inevitable that uh, Indian ministers will feel uh, the need to raise these issues with them, uh, which indeed they did, and we, we are handling that, and as I said earlier just now, um, Ofcom is, of course, in, in pursuing the case against the uh, television broadcasting authorities to make sure that there's nothing wrong that's been done. At the government-to-government -government level, has the Indian government lodged a formal protest? Um, it depends what you mean by that. They have raised it within exactly the, the way that you described. They have asked us questions about this, and we've assured them that, of course, we will do uh, everything to make sure the rule of law has applied. But, but it's, 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 let's, let's keep this in perspective. I mean, here's a television uh, program that popped up on the headlines because actually headlines is what the producers of the television program and all the people on it want and it's doing them uh, really rather well and of course the governments need to handle this because there's a public debate out there uh, concerning quite it. right you say the indian government has asked questions but have they actually lodged a protest or is that going a step too that's far that's going a step too far so mm -hmm. no, no mm -hmm. protests whatsoever have been lodged either in delhi or in london we, we we've had the exchange that you and i are having now about the fact that we as a society and a government need to make sure that due process of law is followed which it will be there's a certain quantum of Indian opinion that believes that in fact Indian politicians are being prickly, that they're overreacting, that they're forgetting that this is simply a television program. Do you agree with that view? I, no, I think politicians react to, uh, have to react to public debate. So I, I mean, uh, I, it's not for me to criticize or comment on how the politicians handle this. What about, this the, is threat that we of, about. What about the threat of appropriate action leveled by Anand Sharma? <coughs> Was that one step too far? Well, I, Anand, who I know very well, indeed I've discussed it with him uh, myself. I mean, he just wanted to check that we were doing the right things, which we are, and I've reassured him, and that's uh, it's not an issue. No. And this question of appropriate action has since then been it's dropped? Just, just dropped. It's, it's just been not dropped. an issue. Mm. There's been a rather good two-year spell for Indo-British relations, particularly after you took over as High Commissioner. Has that been damaged or set back by this? I don't think it has, and I very much, as I said earlier on the program, very much hope that it's not. Of course, it's for, for Indians to judge that, not, for, not me. I, mean, I don't think we've ever seen such a, an exciting period in the Indo-British relationship as the last two or three years. If you look at the volume of um, business between us, if you look at the flow of people between us, the integration of the Indian community into Britain. And that's not been set back by this? Not at all. Not I mean, at all. I mean, if you've got uh, the Indian community in Britain producing 5% of our GDP, 2% of the population, 5% of the GDP, how does that set are you, you back? Scared They're very successful. Are you scared that tourism yeah. that between 2004 and 2005 grew by over 17% could now suffer? Because people like Bernard Donoghue, the representative of the Visit Britain campaign, are concerned that the Shilpa Shetty effect could damage tourism from India. Are you as High Commissioner scared of that? Not at all. I think rather the opposite. I think, if anything, this has shown the affection there is in Britain for Shilpa Shetty, who probably wasn't very widely known in Britain before, uh, overwhelming votes of confidence by the great British public for Shilpa Shetty in this event. If anything, that's going to attract people. According to the newspapers, Jade Goody has announced that she has applied for a visa to come to India. She wants to visit perhaps even in the fairly near future. Yeah. As High Commissioner, do you think it's advisable for her to come at this uh, moment? It's up to her. I mean, we have 600,000, 6 lakh British visitors coming to India every year. We're all biggest but supplier Jane of Goody tourism. If Jane Goody, Jade Goody wants to come and do some tourism here, she'll learn a lot about do India. Do you think that her presence in this country could excite emotions and perhaps protests that you would rather were forgotten about? Do you think it could revise memories that you were rather forgotten about? I, I doubt it. It seems to me if she is coming at all, from what she said publicly, she's coming to learn a bit about India and to sort of put behind her those unfortunate comments. So you have no problem with her coming. So it's up to her and you. <laughs> One last question. You're then fairly confident that the whole Shilpa Shetty celebrity Big Brother episode is going to blow away without really leaving any lasting damage? And more than that, actually, I mean, I'm very confident about that in terms of our bilateral relationship. But I do think it's another sign of a vitality of a public debate in Britain which we ought to be proud of. Now, I'm not, not at all proud of individual people who make offensive remarks, but I am proud of the fact that this rather diverse and changing society tackles these sorts of issues heads on in an ongoing debate. And I think that's right and healthy in a pluralist democracy. And almost in a word, the debate that is provoked is a good thing, it's a positive thing. It is indeed. Mm -hmm. Societies need to talk about Absolutely. racism, and the more they talk about it, the more likely they are to act on it. Absolutely. Hi, Commissioner. A pleasure talking to you on Devil's Advocate. Thank you very much.